Salt Shaking Sisters, Barbara Chapman, Hondo, Texas, part of the WOW Women of Word Ministry. And we are on the November daily devotions that have been sent out. Made a PowerPoint. This is number three video. Watch over your word to perform it. And we're in Hebrews 3, 10 through 19. That's Hebrews 3, 10 through 19. And the word for today is turn your heart to Jesus for salvation. Turn your heart to Jesus for salvation. God does not want us to have a sinful, unbelieving heart or turn away from Him. In Romans 10, 9 through 10, this is a salvation scripture that a lot of us use in sharing with someone that needs to get saved. It says, do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? You can. All you need to do is talk to God in a normal tone of voice, just as if you were talking to a friend. Confess to Him you're a sinner and lost and want Him to come into your heart. Confess Him as Lord, believe in your heart, accept Him as your Savior, thank Him for saving you. Now go tell someone that you got saved today. It's that simple. We try to make it difficult. We think we have to change and do something. Nope. Jesus does it all. We have no hand in this miracle. Welcome to the family of God if you just received Him as your Savior. Okay, let's go on ladies and see the words for some words for today encourage now this is a, a ministry of encouragement that God's Word is encouragement and it gives daily instructions as you read his word encourage one another daily share Jesus with others and then he tells us not to harden our hearts and to hear God's voice in the word don't forget to thank God for the small things in life and remember the rough times he brought you through and trust and cling to him use his word to get through any tough times that you're in right now use his word to get through any tough times that you might be in right now unbelief in Jesus as your Savior will keep you out of heaven no Jesus no life no Jesus K-N-O-W no life K-N-O-W no Jesus no life live in peace Father, if there's anyone in need of salvation today, let this be their day of salvation and give us boldness to speak into others' lives. Thankful in Jesus' name. All right, now, this is a Hebrew summary, okay? I think this is, uh, I should have put it in a little bit sooner, but uh, watch over my word to perform it. That's what God says. And Hebrews, this is a summary of this chapter's contents. Opposite the, the word for today ladies is opposition 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 is a part of our Christian walk and God's grace helps us live victorious through all of them okay ladies this time once again we're gonna pull out the old commentary this book is longer and deeper in truth and history and I'm not a theologian so I want to get some help here and you know that I use the believers Bible commentary and there's hundreds of them out there but since there's a lot of meat in this book of uh, Hebrews, I will be using the Bible. Bible. Listen to me, be bop bop. The Believer's Bible Commentary. Okay, um, the place that this book was written was in Canaan, and the author is unknown. A lot of people think it's Paul, but it does not say who the author really is. I think a lot of us just assume that it's Paul, so I don't know who the author of, of Hebrews is. The date is 64-65 A.D., and these are some background and themes of Hebrews okay Hebrews dealt with a, a tremendous struggles that involved leaving one religious system for another which was leaving Judaism for Christ that was a big big step okay leaving the popular for the unpopular the majority for the minority the oppressed for the oppressed the oppressors for the oppressed any it says and this caused many serious problems does this sound like today kind of right if you're a sold out Christian you're dealing with opposition remember our acronym perseverance and stand firm walk in God's grace we can do it through the strength of Jesus this letter was written to people in a Jewish background and our epistle deals with two classes truly saved Hebrews and those who had nothing but an outward look of Christianity when a Jew left the faith of his forefathers he was looked on as a turncoat and apostate was often punished with one or more of the following disinheritance 
loss of employment, harassment, public mockery, imprisonment, persecution, and much opposition. Okay? Those who profess to be followers of Jesus face, face you know, they face bitter opposition. For true believers, this could, could lead to discouragement and despair. Sounds familiar, right? Be encouraged. Yahoo. Y'all know I'm on the internet with my sister a lot. It's Yahoo. They like that Yahoo icon. I hear that a lot. And have faith. It says to be encouraged and have faith in the promise of God's word. We need to constantly be reminded of the eternal privilege and blessings that are ours in Christ. We need encouragement to endure in spite of opposition and difficulties. And all professing believers need to be warned against reverting back to ceremonial religion. Remember the religious acronym? Okay, we need encouragement to endure in spite of opposition and difficulties. And all professing believers need to be warned against reverting to ceremonial religion after having tasted and seen that the Lord is good. So we want to walk in God's grace and know His Word and not be religious or get caught up in ceremonies. All right, now we're in Hebrews 4, 1 through 6. Hebrews 4, 1 through 6, and the word for the day is take a break, rest. Okay, I got it, God, I got it. This is one of those where, oh, okay, I got it, God, I got it. So take a break and rest, and this is something we can all relate to in this fast-track world. Okay, the words are rest, walk, faith, Sabbath, and stop. Okay, God speaks of entering into his rest. It's a walk in faith. To me, to me personally, that says I can have rest and peace if I spend time with him. Peace is so priceless when life hits you with so much so fast. God's word says to rest on the seventh day. Thank God for weekends. I'm sure some of you have different days off depending on your profession. Still yet, try to take time out of your busy schedule to rest. I've even had a hard time resting in my resting time. What does that mean? I can sit down with my coffee, my tea, open my Bible, turn on the computer, which is two of them at the same time now, open PowerPoint, open my emails, cut and paste devotions, send out emails, yada, yada, yada. And before you know it, my time's up. And oftentimes, I didn't even sit still like I should. You know, it's about disciplining yourself to rest. That sounds funny, doesn't it? But you know what? I think it's true. It's true for me to discipline. Actually say no, stop, rest. It's about disciplining yourself to rest. I think, okay? That's what works for me. That sounds funny, doesn't it? But it's true. There are just some things we need to say no, stop, quit for right now. Okay? I'm going to say it again. No, stop, quit for right now. I'm not the only one that battles this, I'm sure, right? Okay, ladies? Well, I sure didn't know I was going to get all of this out of Hebrews 4.4. 4. Isn't God awesome to take such a small verse and speak so loudly with love? I'm going to say that again. Isn't God awesome to take such a small verse and speak so loudly with love? Father, help us speak loudly but with love. Help us walk in your love. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's go to the next one, okay? And now we're in Hebrews 4, 7 through 16. Hebrews 4, 7 through 16, and the word for today is rest. So we're still in resting. Rest and go to the throne of God's grace today, ladies. Rest and go to the throne of God's grace. And the words are harden. Enter, enter into his rest. Example, living, active, sharp attitudes. Attitudes is an important one. Judges, confidence, that's an important word in this study I'll share later. Approach, mercy, and grace. Approach the throne of grace and receive mercy. Okay, don't harden your heart when God is trying to speak to you. It's because he loves us and wants what's best for us. Okay? Don't harden your heart when God is trying to speak to you. Anyone who enters God's rest 
also rests from his own work just as God did from his. Let us enter God's rest and obey his word and be an example to others. This following verse is the foundation verse of the ministry WOW Women of Word that was birthed in 2007 and all these other um, ministries are part of it and it's just kind of evolved and grown into that. The Word of God is living and active and sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of our heart. Nothing is hidden from God. He sees it all. And Jesus is the great high priest in heaven. Hold on to your faith and profession of Jesus. Stand firm and follow your convictions, ladies. I'm going to read that one again. Hold on to your faith and profession of Jesus. Stand firm and follow your convictions. Okay, Jesus is able to sympathize with our weakness because he was tempted in every way as we are, yet he never ever sinned. Let us approach, ladies, let us approach the throne of grace with confidence so we can receive mercy and grace to help us in our time of need. I'm going to repeat that one, ladies. Let us approach the throne of grace with confidence, with confidence, so we can receive mercy and grace to help us in our time of need. All right, let's do one more. Now we're in Hebrews 5, 7 through 14. Hebrews 5, 7 through 14. And the word for today is don't be slow to learn. It's getting a little bit difficult now. Don't be slow to learn. It's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. And this is going to be two PowerPoints for this uh, devotion. And the words are, okay, suffering, obedience, learn, salvation, mature, trained, petition, prayers, apply, grow up, simple, and retention. Okay, during the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to God. The one who could save him from death, he suffered and obeyed. Mm. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. He learned obedience from what he suffered. Wow. He was perfect and the source of our eternal salvation for all who obey him. There's a scripture in the Bible that tells us if we suffer in the flesh, we will cease from sin. That means we have to say no to sin wrong passions and desires that are harmful to us and only separate us from our relationship with the Father. The author of Hebrews goes on to tell us that he has much more to say but we're slow to learn and we're slow to listen. And Jesus had many things to say to us but we could not bear all of them. It is God's heart that every Christian grows up in him and share their faith and testimony about Jesus. We need to know God's word enough to share and encourage others. And that's what we're doing through the Salt Shaken Sisters ministry. Once again, this does not imply, okay, this does not imply that you should know everything about the Bible. I don't remember a lot of what I read on a given day. Thank God for WordPad and Microsoft Word, pen and paper. This is what I love about God in this way. He teaches me in a simple manner, and that's how I share it with you ladies, in a simple manner. Shorter verses, words, phrases, acronyms, and reading less at one time and retaining more. Okay? Don't try to be like someone else. Be who God made you to be. Follow the example of Jesus. I'm going to stop here, and on video number three, we'll, we'll pick back up, because this is important. We'll be right back, ladies.